A major reason that commercial flights have two pilots is to handle a situation where one pilot could become incapacitated. Hypoxia is one of those risks. Let's take a look as ATC handles a Cessna pilot who displays symptoms of hypoxia. And Cessna, 441 minutes there. There's some uh, weather well to the southeast of you. I'm just curious, are you guys in the uh, clear there? Yeah, we're in the clear and off to the right. We're, we're depicting some on our radar, but um, it looks all below us. Okay, do you hear this guy's voice? It, it sounds like he's slurring his words. And uh, it, one of the things that uh, these ATC controllers are uh, tuned into is if a pilot's voice should change for any reason, especially if they start slurring their words. Now, they've been talking to this guy for a little while. I'm presuming he was okay. And now, all of a sudden, it, something's going on. And one of the things that they're looking for is a condition called hypoxia. And this controller uh, is concerned that this guy might be hypoxic. I'll talk more about hypoxia in a minute. Several thousand feet below us. Cessna 441, let me see Roger. And uh, if you don't mind for traffic, I need to start you down a little early. Just sort of maintain flight level 230. Okay, 230. Two, well, let me see here. here we go. Okay, so you get this kind of jolly response from this guy, sort of slurring his words. He goes, okay, 230, here we go. You know, uh, hypoxia takes on a number of different symptoms. So what is hypoxia? It's when your body just doesn't have enough oxygen to operate at full capacity. And so when I was trained in the military to look for hypoxia, you look at the nail beds of your fingernails, and if they start turning blue, you might be hypoxic. Another thing is your lips will turn blue. Now, I can't see my own lips, but I can see my co-pilots, and if they're turning blue, I'm probably turning blue too. So again, uh, the, that's some of the physical manifestations of it. The others are a little harder to identify. You might feel euphoric. You might feel happy. You might feel giddy. You might begin to slur your words. Most people that are slurring their words don't realize that they're doing that. This guy is definitely slurring his words, but you see the kind of happy mood he's in, you know, ah, two, three, oh, here we go. Now let's see if he does, if he complies, because that's going to be the next thing for ATC. If this guy doesn't comply with their instructions, they know he's probably hypoxic. And Cessna 441, Lima Sirius, they'll show you at flight level 270 of you as started your descent. Yes, sir, we have started this, and um, we're currently out of a. Uh, 27 for 27.9. Okay, so now he's got confirmation that this guy is hypoxic because he gave him an instruction a while back to go down to 230. He's still at 27,000 feet. He hasn't even complied with that instruction. And now you hear the pilot struggling to kind of get his thoughts together. And he's like, yeah, we're, we're descending. No, you're not. Okay, uh, yeah, we're out of 27 for 27.9. That would be a climb, not a descent. And so he's not making any sense in what he's saying, and this controller is really sharp. He jumps right into action, and look at what he does for this pilot. Uh, 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 Cessna 441, Lima Sierra. Uh, I believe you're hypoxic. Yep. Yep. I am declaring emergency on your behalf. Perfect. Uh, just verify your oxygen system is on and is working properly. And uh, descend and maintain 12,000, uh, the Columbus Altimeter 3023. Uh, American 2334. American 2334, go ahead. Regarding that aircraft that you declared emergency for, you could ask him what his uh, cabin altitude indication is. Okay, so that's a great question. So the airplane is helping out saying, hey, ask him what his cabin altitude is. If he's got a readout, he's going to know. If he's well above 10,000 feet in the cabin altitude, yeah, he's, he's going to become a victim of hypoxia. And so that's, again, going to be another confirmation of the diagnosis here. Uh, from the air traffic controller. Uh, this guy now is beginning to comply. He's beginning to descent down. Uh, what you're going to see here is he's probably looking around for his oxygen. Now, it's, I don't know about this particular uh, model airplane. It's a twin engine Cessna. It's called a Conquest. Uh, I don't know if they have internal pressurization or if they just have external oxygen that they put on. But he now is going to put on his oxygen mask, and then you're going to hear him try to talk. Uh, and you can't understand anything that he's saying. You might be thinking that euphoria is not a bad thing. You want to keep that euphoric feeling going? Hit the subscribe button and become Captain Steve's new best friend. Number 441 Lima Sierra, can, do you have a, a cabin altitude uh, indicator? 
Yeah, he's trying to transmit and you can't understand that. Again, incomprehensible. Cessna 441 Limit Sierra, uh, we believe you're hypoxic and had to declare an mm -hmm. emergency on your behalf. Uh, uh, do you understand? Good question. That's a great question. Okay, so he gets this long response from the Cessna, and, uh, and you can't understand it, ATC can't understand it. Probably what's happening is this guy has put his oxygen mask on, and he's breathing good oxygen now, and he's probably trying to talk on a radio or maybe a headset that he has on, but it's outside the oxygen mask, and you can't, it's just not comprehensible. And uh, this is actually a good sign, not a, not a bad sign. Uh, and let's see how this air traffic controller resolves it. November 441 Lima here. You're, you're barely readable. Barely readable. Uh, but if you can hear me, just yep. continue descending. Uh, I'll say descend and maintain uh, 6,000. Just comply. And uh, there's no airplanes anywhere near you. So just keep descending just, and uh, come on as low as you need to. But uh, descend and maintain 6,000, and that should help you. Okay. Excellent controller. <laughs> All right, this time you can hear them. From the center, maintain at 6,000, and it's able, uh, see if you can, uh, uh, you're, you're coming in very broken <laughs> on your radio. Yeah, help me out here, he's saying a little bit. Uh, 441 Lima Sierra, how are you reading out? Okay, that's much better, and most likely what he's done is he took his oxygen mask off for a second, talked on his radio, probably put it back on, um, and he may be at an altitude where he's free to take his oxygen off. That would be somewhere below 10,000 feet. But let's see what happens here next. Number 441 Lima Sierra, I read you much better. And mm. and uh, like I said, like how are you doing right now? You, you've been really hard to understand and haven't been very clear in your communications at all. Okay, this is excellent on this guy's part. He's going to begin a dialogue with this pilot. This is not normal. Uh, but a good controller is going to say, I, I, I need to talk to this guy. Keep talking to him and hear back from him. Does he sound less slurry? Is he more coherent in what he's saying? Is he complying with what I'm asking him to do? If he is, we've been successful. We've brought him down. He's getting good oxygen now, and he's he's going to um, really help this guy out a lot. Okay. Uh, I apologize about that, but um, I, uh, I feel totally fine and coherent. Um, Okay, that is one of the signs of hypoxia. You feel fine. I feel, in fact, I feel better than I felt in a long time. You might even feel euphoric. And this guy might not remember much of what happened up at altitude. Uh, all he knows now is he's feeling a whole lot better and he's trying to communicate that. Uh, he's still kind of lagging a little bit in his communication. He's going to give you an excuse here in a minute for why he thinks he's having the problem. That's not 441 Lima Sierra. You do sound better, uh, but keep the sending of, keep, keep coming down. maintain 6,000. Yep. Acknowledge with the readback. Okay, down to 6,000. Conquest one lane is there. You can hear this guy sounds much better than he did a little while ago. Cessna 441 Lima Sierra, how do you hear? Loud and clear, how do you hear? Cessna 441 Lima Sierra, loud and clear. Okay, so the controller is just checking on him. How you doing? Cessna right. 441 Lima Sierra, uh, are you using supplemental oxygen? I had been for the descent since uh, you told me to uh, to start down, and I took it off at uh, 8,000 feet. Yeah, that explains uh, the communication that you couldn't understand what he was saying. And he said, yeah, w once I get down to about 8,000 feet, I know I'm below 10. I can take the oxygen off. Now you can hear me okay. I'm breathing all right. Everything's kind of uh, resolving That's itself four, four, here. Sarah, Roger. Um, the only thing I can think of is I, I've been working. I've been working, and the controller's going, okay, are we going to have another round of this? What What do you mean working? Okay. Assessment 441, Lima Sierra, say that last part again, that you said something about you were working. Yeah, I was, uh, you know, all weekend, it was a beautiful weekend. I was doing a lot of physical labor at home, and then I had this early trip this morning to take uh, my best friend's family down to a funeral for their father, and um, I was down there all day, and, um, you know, I just I was kind of sluggish all day. Yeah, so this is a long story, but this is very unusual between an airplane and a controller. Uh, usually it's, it's real uh, tight communication, right, but this guy's kind of bearing his soul about his weekend and all the work he did, and he's kind of searching for an excuse uh, short of I was hypoxic. It may be both. It may be that he was tired and fatigued. 
uh, when he was up at altitude and he got hypoxic. Those, that's a bad combination, those two things. Clearly, he's recovering from it, and kudos to this controller. So, um, this guy through. you know, that, that might have been at. That's my 441 line of Roger. And we just wanted to be uh, better safe than sorry better kind of situation. Just want to make sure that everything yeah. was okay. And uh, when someone is hypoxic, we, we always just try to get them descending to uh, hopefully help them out. Yeah, that's terrific. On this no, side. I appreciate that. Thank you. I believe me, I'm... I was looking at my fingernails and, and, and all the, uh, uh, I didn't see anything. I think it was just, you know, fatigue. So this, this pilot is actually trained in the signs of hypoxia. He said, I looked at my fingernails. And so he's looking at them. Now, if you're hypoxic, you might be so euphoric or kind of out of it. You don't really see very clearly. But he knows the signs to look for. Uh, but then he followed the instructions, got down to a lower altitude. You can tell he's recovering. He's doing much better. Assessment 441 line of Sierra, Roger. Roger. Which is, you know, which isn't an excuse. It's just as bad, so um, I do appreciate your concern. Assessment 441 line of Sierra, just glad that uh, everything is okay. Everything is okay. Thank you, sir. So this is almost like one of your kids that got into trouble. He's like, tell me I'm okay, right? And he is. And this is a wonderful outcome from uh, an air traffic controller that was really professional, really skilled, saw the signs. Um, so what can we learn from this episode? Well, we can learn that about the symptoms of hypoxia. We can see those things in ourselves. We can see them more clearly in somebody else. And you see how well the system works with people who are professional, highly trained. And as soon as they get a whiff of something, they start into that mode of, hey, I think something's wrong. Let me help this guy. And then he does something that's just wonderful. That air traffic controller just slows down his communication. And he talks slowly so that the pilot can hear it, comprehend it, and come down from altitude. If this guy hadn't come down from altitude, it could have had uh, a worse outcome than it did. This is a great resolution of it. Hats off to this controller and the pilot who complied with it. This is just something that happens out there every once in a while. Not very often, uh, but it does happen. This controller did a great job. So in the end, the aviation industry has multiple systems in place to keep everyone safe even when a pilot may not realize there is an issue. Now you know. I'm Captain Steve. Fly safe.